I'm sure you've been wondering if there's anything that you shouldn't say in your OET speaking subtest. Let's take a look together and we'll focus in on relationship building. Uh, we'll have a quick introduction to the criteria. We'll then go over some things that you really shouldn't be saying and some things that you can say. I'm also going to give you my five top tips to score well in the relationship building criterion of your OET speaking subtest. Welcome back for those of you who are joining me again. Hello for those of you who are joining for the first time. My name's Sona and I'm your online OET tutor with Bose Learning. I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET and what that means is that I've done extra training to make sure that I can deliver you great quality lessons. Just a little reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, then please do, because I've got over 180 videos already and more coming up, so you always know when something new has arrived from me to help you on your OET journey. So let's get started with the assessment criteria. We're not going to go through everything because there's quite a lot here. Have a look at one of my other videos if you are not already familiar with that. Um, and we're going to be focusing just in particular on the clinical assessment and the relationship building, which you can see highlighted here. And in this part of the clinical communication criteria, there are four indicators that the examiners are looking for. Why do you need to know this? Well, if you know what the examiners are looking for, it's easier to give it to them, of course, and it's much easier to avoid saying things that are going to take away from this evidence that you're building. So we'll go through each one individually. I'm going to give you some tips on what not to say and some tips about what you can say as well. So let's start with the first one, which is initiating the interaction appropriately. Now, it says what it is. You have to make a good start, a good first impression on your patient, but ultimately, of course, on the assessor. So some things to help you score well in this part. You can think of the following things. Do you know the patient? How may they be feeling? And which part of the consultation are you at currently? Let's go through them in a bit more detail. Do you know the patient? They'll explain this to you in the background. So make sure you read that carefully. They might say a patient has come to see you, in which case it's more than likely that you don't know them. Or they might say your patient has come to see you, in which case you do. If you're not sure, just check with the interlocutor in your three minutes and ask the interlocutor, do I know this patient? What should I call them? The reason this is so important is if you know the patient, it makes absolutely no sense to say hello, good morning, my name is nurse, I'm the duty nurse in charge today or hello, my name is Dr. Blah blah blah. It doesn't make sense. You know the patient, so make sure you greet them appropriately. Don't start in the wrong way. Also, think about how the patient might be feeling. Are they really angry? Have they been waiting long? Is that indicated in the background? Are they in a lot of pain? Are they upset? If they are, don't go into a long greeting. Apologise for the delay and then maybe introduce yourself. So think about how you're going to start. Don't get the patient or the carer more angry by saying, oh, good morning morning my name is and actually they're so frustrated because they've been waiting since three o'clock that morning or whatever it happened to be so again check the background anticipate how they might be feeling and then start appropriately also which part of the consultation are you at be careful because sometimes in the role play you're actually halfway through, you're midway through the consultation and you've already examined the patient. It might tell you this in the background. So if it says you have examined the patient and found them to be presenting with X or Y, don't start by saying come in, sit down, take a seat. It doesn't make sense. You're halfway through the consultation. Also, if you are in their home and you're visiting them, 
don't start by saying thank you for seeing me today. It doesn't make sense. I know you're nervous, it might be a bit stressful to be in the exam, but do read the background carefully and start in the appropriate way. So my top tips for this part then on how to score well, read the background information and get ready to start. Plan what you're going to say in your three minutes preparation time. Plan your opening line because once that's done, then the rest of the role play will flow through nice and easily. Okay, moving on to the next part then, demonstrating an attentive and respectful attitude. Here it's so important that you listen to the interlocutor who's playing the part of the patient or carer. Please listen. I have taught so many students and I've done so many mock tests and what I've realised is that it's such a stressful situation. You stop listening somehow. So really, really listen. Don't miss any opportunities to explore patient concerns, even if they're not so obvious. What do I mean? For example, if the interlocutor is playing the part of a carer, a parent in this case, and they say to you, I don't want to take my son out of school for this cough because I can't take time off work to look after him. Don't say, I understand, but it's really important that he stays at home until he gets better. Maybe that's what your card says. Your task indicates that you have to persuade the carer to keep the boy out of school. But don't just say that. Don't stop there. Look, you've missed something. You haven't listened. Because the carer, the parent is saying, I can't take time off work to look after him. So why is this? Instead of just trying to persuade them, say, I understand it's really important he stays at home. Ask, is there someone who can help look after him? Why do you think he can't take time off work? Do you think it would help if I write a letter to your boss? So listen and respond to what the interlocutor is saying. So top tip number two, pay as much attention to what the patient or the carer is saying to you. Pay as much attention to that as to your task card. Don't just try and get through the tasks that have been listed, but respond to the patient or carer. Acknowledge what they're saying and reply in an appropriate way. Okay, number three then, the third indicator of this criterion is adopting a non-judgmental approach. This is where you have to not be critical and instead you have to be encouraging. So don't say in the previous instance, oh, it's stupid, you have to take your son out of school. It's not being very responsible if you don't. Don't say something like that because that's being critical. Instead, try and encourage them. I'm glad you've come to see me about this. Let's see how we can work together to help you find a solution to keep your son out of school until he's feeling better. So don't be critical, be encouraging instead and pay attention to your tone of voice. Make sure what you're saying doesn't sound sarcastic or judgmental or critical. So practice this with a friend or a colleague or a teacher if you want um, to get expert advice as well. Make sure that what you're saying is reflected in your voice. And then the last indicator is your ability to show empathy for feelings, predicament or emotional state. Now, again, as a teacher with my students who are just starting off or with my students who are taking mock tests with us, so often what you're saying sounds fake. So be really careful. Don't be fake. Don't just say something for the sake of saying it. I'm actually going to go so far as to tell you, don't say I'm so sorry. I've heard this so many times and it just falls flat because actually quite often you're just not sorry. You just want to try and make them better. So don't be fake. Don't say something unless you really, really can show that in your voice, unless you really genuinely feel bad for them. 
don't say I'm so sorry. So that's my tip number four. Don't try and just say this generic expression. It doesn't work. It often falls flat. Instead, use something else. Don't just say, I understand what you're going through. If you don't, if you don't have kids and you say, I understand what you're going through with your kids at the moment, it's very clear that you don't understand because it comes across in your voice. Be careful that you're matching what you're saying as well to the um, situation. So there's no point saying, I understand what you're going through. If your patient has just described symptoms of a common cold, to be going through something is an emotionally really difficult, distressing situation. So don't say it for something ordinary. Don't say it if you genuinely don't understand. Instead, what you should be doing is naming the emotion. So I understand that you're feeling really confused, really upset. I understand this is a really difficult situation for you. Name the emotion instead of just saying, I'm so sorry, and practice with your tone of voice. Again, do this with friends or colleagues because they're often really good judges of how you sound. Or practice with your teacher, which is a great way to improve your score. If you are practicing with a teacher, please do make sure that they're registered, that they're at least a preliminary provider of the OET, or that they are a premium preparation provider of the OET. And then you know that the lessons you are getting are good quality lessons. Okay, in summary then, read the background information carefully and plan how you're going to start. So important, please listen to your patient or the carer, respond to them, don't just gallop through your tasks, pay attention to your tone of voice, make sure what you're saying is conveyed in your voice as well, don't just say something generic like you're sorry, unless you really are, name that emotion the patient or carer is experiencing instead and practice, that's the best way that you are going to improve your score. If you do want more information about the mock tests that we run, then please take a look at the info box below. I'll put in a link there. But basically what happens is you're going to arrange a time to have a mock test online. We go through the mock and exam conditions online and then you get written feedback by two premium preparation providers. So it's a great way for you to know where you are, how you're doing at the moment. For more information about my on-demand courses on Udemy, I've put in some discount codes below. Take a look at those because the great thing about Udemy is that you can try them. If you find that you don't like them, then you can get your money back, no questions asked. So it's a great way to have a go and see if you can get better and study online with these on-demand courses, which you can do at your own pace. If you like this video, I'd be so happy if you can help my channel grow by pressing the like button, subscribing, and of course, sharing this with friends or colleagues. That would be absolutely fantastic. And thank you very much for watching. If you've got questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. And why not watch one of my other videos right now? See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.